Hello again guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's video we are going to be taking a look at the Flight FX Honda Jet. The aircraft has just released for Microsoft Flight Simulator at a very reasonable $24.99 USD. It's great that we are starting to see more and more add-ons coming into the sim from smaller developers doing a really nice job and selling the add-on at a very reasonable price. And I would say that the Honda Jet here very much falls into that category. In today's video we're going to be taking the aircraft on a review flight, so not a full review but as usual we'll try and cover as much as we can during the flight itself. We're currently on the ground at Washington's National Airport and we're going to be heading out towards the northeast. We're taking a local congressman and his family up towards Burning Blue Designs Martha's Vineyard for the weekend. We're going to carry out a full flight in the aircraft all the way through from a cold and dark start to shut down in Martha's Vineyard. We'll talk about the aircraft as we go and I'll try and give you a good feel for the overall level of quality from the product. As usual, at the end of the video I'll give you my overall conclusions on what I make of the Honda Jet. As always guys, if you do enjoy the video please consider giving it a like and subscribing to the channel. As you can see for yourselves, the Honda Jet is very beautifully rendered and the same is certainly true in the cockpit as well. So let's head for the flight deck and we'll begin running through the before start checks. So welcome this time to the cockpit of the Flight FX Honda Jet. A really nice effort from flight effects, as you can see, really high level of attention to detail. Plenty of that as well with the systems, which we'll be taking a look at later on. We'll also take more of a look at the aircraft as we go, as we take our passengers up towards Martha's Vineyard. We've just got on board the aircraft, so no electrical power at the moment. We'll turn the battery master on. And we'll just wait for the G3000 there to initialise. We do have ground electrical power available as well, the courtesy of our ground power unit. So we'll turn that on and save ourselves draining down the battery. Firstly, coming down to our little MFD here, we'll go to Sim Options. We have a Load Manager, and as you can see we've loaded up the two pilots. We've got one member of Cabin Crew on board, and our three passengers along with a little bit of baggage. We've also got £2,200 of fuel on board. In the Sim Actions category, at the moment we've got the main door open, the rest of the aircraft doors are closed. We'll go to Initialization. I watched Ave Angel's video on the Honda Jet earlier on and she describes it as an iPad. It's very much the case. The aircraft is highly automated. Uh, most systems are actually automatic more or less. We'll carry out the systems test initially. We'll go to pre-flight. You can see that the test is now in progress so that will run through. We can leave that doing its thing. Weight and fuel. We can initialise. We can get that straight from the sim so we'll do that. And you can see there it's given our crew and stores weights. There's the stall test. Payload, again we can get from the sim. Showing four passengers, that's including our member of cabin crew. Fuel, £2,200. And takeoff, we can calculate. And that gives us a takeoff weight of £10,486. So we'll go to next, we can get our V speeds. Again, we can get those from the sim. And you can see we have V1, 110, VR, 115, and V2, 120. So all of our V speeds are set and in. We'll go back, the systems test is complete, weights are in, speeds are in. So we've completed the initialization. Onto the aircraft systems, we'll just run through those briefly. So as far as the status page is concerned, you can see circuit breakers and solid state relays are all normal. Lights all showing off except for the nav lights at the moment. The lights are actually in the automatic position. Again, the aircraft is highly automated. We have normal positions for most of the lighting, which is automatic. We have on and off as well though, should we wish to control them manually. So just going back to the status page briefly. You can see hydraulics are checked, hydraulic quantity looks good. Parking brake is set. Oxygen quantity is checked, both fire bottles are good. External power is connected, the cabin main door is open. On the environmentals, no bleed air of course coming off the engines at the moment. We're targeting a cop temperature there of 23 degrees, actually showing 27. And again the oxygen quantity looks good. Electrical system, again everything looking good there at the moment, just off the external power. Fuel, we've got full fuel load in both of the wing tanks, a full a full centre front tank there and an empty aft centre tank. Hydraulic systems, again the reservoir quantity looks good, and all of the accumulators there nicely pressurised. And finally ice protection, again at the moment most of the systems in the auto position, so currently off, and we're showing an outside air temperature there of 27 degrees. So again, really nice level of detail from the aircraft. We'll initialise the main screen, we'll come back to that later on. Going back to the main page then, we've looked through our aircraft systems. Utilities, we've already initialised. And so on to the before start checks. Just scroll through that. So coming back up to battery, the battery is on. 
we'll tick off the items as we go. Oxygen is checked on as normal, we've already checked the oxygen quantity. Pressurization again is set to normal. Electrical we have on and normal, we've checked the electrical page. ELT again set to normal, as you can see most of the systems as I say do have a normal position. Nose wheel steering set to normal. Landing gear we have down. Alternate gear release, the handle there is stowed. Parking brake is set. Flaps are up. Thrust levers are in the cutoff position. Speed brake is installed and that's currently in. Ice protection. Again, everything in the normal position there. Engine anti ice is off. Fuel panel. Again, everything's set to normal. We've checked the fuel state. We do need a thousand kilos or two thousand two hundred pounds for the flight. Trim panel. Again, set and checked everything in normal. Windshield heat. Again, normal. You'll see a little bit of a pattern developing here. Pneumatic panel. Everything is set to normal. Glare shield panel. Just the warning there at the moment for the left and right engine oil pressures. Obviously, expecting to see that, so we'll cancel the warning. Otherwise though, all lights are out, so everything is dark. Chime, again, all dark now. All the lights are out, and avionics initialization will run through now. So coming down to the other MFD, we've already got that set up on the flight plan page. We're going to set up our flight plan. Origin is Washington National, Kilo Delta Charlie Alpha. And we'll hit enter. Destination is Martha's Vineyard, and that's Kilo Mike Victor Yankee. Southwest 486, turn left heading 260. On route waypoints, we're first tracking out towards the Delta Charlie Alpha VOR. That is, of course, actually the uh, Washington National VOR. Looks like we do have some duplicates there. We want the VOR itself, so we'll select that. After Delta Charlie Alpha, it's going to be the Romeo Bravo Victor. Again, we do have some duplicates. We want the USA. After Romeo Bravo Victor, it's going to be Charlie, Charlie, Charlie. 455, and then from Charlie on towards the Martha's Vineyard VOR, which is Mike Victor Yankee. So the flight plan is in. We have Delta Charlie Alpha, Romeo Bravo Victor, Charlie, Charlie, Charlie on to. Mike Victor Yankee. You can see we've already got the chart up there for uh, Washington National. Really nice Navigraph integration with the aircraft. It's pretty easy to set up, pretty seamless as well it seems in terms of operation. Currently on the south apron we're going to be uh, taxiing out for runway 04, departing of course out towards the northeast. We'll take a look at the chart functionality a little bit more later on. We're going to be flying the ILS into Martha's Vineyard. For now though we're going to map Again, I have to say, I'm not usually a fan of the default avionics, but they're really great in the aircraft, a really nice level of customization. And we'll obviously get more of a feel for that as we carry out the flight. Anyway, we'll say that the avionics initialization is complete, so we'll tick off the final item there on our before start checks. We do just need to initialize the autopilot for our flight, but we'll do that in just a moment's time. Just before we run through the startup, we'll take a quick look at the cabin, and then we'll come back and run through our checks, get the engines fired up. Okay, so we now have all of our passengers on board. We just closed up the main aircraft door, so running through the start checks. Passenger briefing, our flight attendant's going to take care of, but we'll brief up the departure. So again, we've come down to charts. We're going to be flying the National 8 departure, which is plate 10-3 Echo. Loosely going to be flying that. We'll be departing off runway 04. Initially, we'll track off the 070 radial outbound from Delta Charlie Alpha, and then we'll pick up the 064 radial thereafter to track inbound towards Romeo Bravo Victor. That has us climbing up to an altitude of 5,000 feet. You can see for the active nav we have VOR1 with Delta Charlie Alpha tuned up. And on the heading bug we've got runway heading selected there initially. So the briefing is complete. Again we'll just work our way through the checklist as we go. 
Rider pedals have been adjusted. Seats and seat belts. They should be on, but we'll just double check. So coming down to the aircraft systems, we'll go to interior lights, and you can see the fasten seat belt signs and the no smoking signs there are on. So again, we'll tick off the item. Doors are closed. Parking brake is set. Gas messages are checked. Electrical volts have been checked. We'll be starting the left-hand engine first. And again, an incredibly easy and automated start procedure. All we need to do is hit the left engine starter. The beacon light's going to come on automatically for us. You can see we have N2 rotation. N1 coming up there as well, as is the oil pressure. We'll just wait until we see max motoring. The whole process is almost entirely automatic. There's max motoring, so we just need to select the thrust lever to the idle detent. And you can see the M1 coming up, ITT coming up there as well. We'll just wait until we have the engine stable. And we do have a good start there on the left engine. We can now start the right. Okay, so we do have two good starts. The engine parameters are checked. Engine anti-ice is not required. External power has been disconnected. Flight controls. We have full up, full down, and neutral. Full left, full right, and neutral. And on the rudder we have full left, full right, and neutral. Flight controls are checked. Heading on to the before taxi checks, wing anti-ice, again not required, transponder, we'll come back to the MFD main page and we want to go to transponder, we'll set that to altitude reporting and we'll leave a squawking in 1200. So transponder is set, flight ID has been confirmed, flight plan has been entered, navigation source we have VR1. Altimeters are set, we have QNH29.98 set on both sides. Flaps will go to the takeoff setting. And we have the takeoff setting there indicated on the systems display. Speed brake will check. So extending that, we have speed brake extended again on the systems display, we can retract that once again. Uh, Camera signs are on and the park brake can come off. That's the before taxi checklist complete. So park brake is off. We're just going to taxi our way out towards the holding point for runway 04. Really nice engine sounds there as we come up on the thrust levers. Looks like the aircraft is going to need quite a bit of thrust to get moving here. And we're off. So as I say, we'll make our way out towards runway 04 and I'll come back to you again once we're lined up and ready to depart. Okay, so we've got ourselves nicely lined up here on runway 04. We do have a slight tailwind, but that's what was given to us by Simbrief, and of course we're departing out to the northeast, so we'll take the slight tailwind for now. Running through the before takeoff checks then, the flaps are set for takeoff. Trims, everything set to normal. We've got four units up for the takeoff, and rudder and aileron trims are set to neutral. Speed brake is retracted. Cast messages 
Oh, I'll check, we just got the uh, cabin power off there. Navigation is set. Flight guidance, we have VOR1 as the active nav source. Takeoff data, V speeds are set. Takeoff briefing is confirmed. Radar not required, ice protection not required. And we'll just bring up the after takeoff checklist. We'll hold that though until we've got the aircraft established nicely up at 5,000 feet. So we're all set and ready to go. We'll hold the aircraft on the brakes. We'll come up to 40% in one, let the engine stabilize. Everything looking good, feet off the brakes. And take off. So there's takeoff power set. Aircraft feels fairly light on the rudder. Coming up through 80 knots. Yeah, just a touch twitchy on the rudder I would say. There's V1 and rotate. Pretty light there in pitch. Rocketing off the ground. We have positive climb, the gear can come up. And we've got flight level change, 130 knots selected there, so we'll pitch for that. Yeah, the aircraft is very light in pitch. Just coming now onto our 070 radial outbound, so we'll turn for that. And we'll just wait until we're up through 1500 feet, and we'll come back to our climb power setting. Go for a heading of around uh, 080 till we intercept the radial. Yeah, the controls in general, I have to say, are very light. There's 1500 feet. So we'll pitch the nose down, we can start the acceleration, we'll come back to climb thrust. can increase our speed now, we'll come up to uh, around 200 knots. And coming back onto the radial, flaps can come up. Just coming up through 3,000 feet. Nicely established on that radial, so we'll reset the heading bug. And just coming up on our speed as well, so trimming for that. Again, the aircraft is really sensitive on the controls. And uh, getting bumped around a little bit here as well. Quite a lot of workload for one pilot, given the sensitive nature of the aircraft to fly. So there's 200 knots. And just coming up on one to go. Get the yaw damper in. Autopilot can go on. Looks like the yaw damper already was in there, so we'll just cancel that. So we have autopilot heading and out. We can come now onto our course outbound of 064. And just coming back off the thrust to make sure we stay below 250 knots. We'll adjust the heading to track outbound, levelling off at 5,000 feet. This will be time for from Bannon, maintaining under above 1,600 until stops from localizer clear to ILS on the way, one approved. So there's 250 knots, good on the heading, we'll just wait until we're back on our CDI bar and then we'll come into nav. 
Holding the speed there, leveling off at 5,000. The automation seems to have done a pretty reasonable job overall there. Running through the after takeoff checks, landing gear is up. Your damper is on. Flaps are up. Thrust levers, we're back now, obviously, below MCT. Just skip the uh, item there. It can be a little bit fiddly using the menu here. Flight guidance is set as required. Ice protection not required. And cabin signs will leave on for the time being. So let's see after takeoff check is complete. So just coming onto our radial, we'll adjust the heading back outbound on 064 more or less. Speed's looking good, just coming a touch back further off the thrust there to maintain 250 knots. And just 5,000 feet here as we cruise our way northeast bound out of Washington. Good now there on the heading, so we're coming to NAV. We have VOR there on the FMA. You can see there leaving the city of Washington behind us. Nice little wing view there as we make our departure. Anyway, we'll assume air traffic's given us clearance now all the way up to our cruising flight level, which is flight level 290. Fairly low cruising altitude for the flight today, it's obviously a pretty short hop over towards Martha's Vineyard. We'll get the aircraft coming up, so we'll go back into flight level change. And we'll come back up to uh, MCT thrust. There's MCT. And again, just fixing up the flight level there, so flight level 290. And we have flight level 290 there on the PFD. So maintaining 250 knots until we're above 10,000 feet. Again, all of our lights are taken care of automatically, so as we come through 10,000 feet, the landing lights should go off. Running through the climb checks, we'll check the pressurisation. Pressurisation looks good, we'll just check the systems there as well. So just checking the status page, everything looking good there. And on the environment page, cam temp looks good. So systems are checked. Altimeters, obviously leaving those till we come up through uh, 18,000 feet here in the States, so we'll leave 299.8 for the time being. And we'll say our climb checks for now are complete. So that takes us over to the cruise checks. Again, we can deal with the altimeters later on. For now, we'll come back to the status page. And we can get rid now of the uh, departure chart, so we'll go to map. And you can see now tracking our way outbound from uh, Washington National out towards the Romeo Bravo Victor VOR. We go to uh, flight plan here on the left MFD, and just come up through 10,000 feet, so we can start accelerating the aircraft now. Come up to uh, 260 knots now for the climb. So we've got 265 selected. Mach 0.63, I believe, is the cruising speed of the aircraft, so we're going to get around 450 knots, I believe, is the, uh, the top speed of the Honda Jet in terms of TAS. Anyway, nicely established here now on the climb, tracking outbound from the Delta Charlie Alpha, and then later on inbound towards Romeo Bravo Yankee. We'll tune that up on uh, Nav 2. So Nav 2, Romeo Bravo Yankee 113 decimal 8. And we can transfer that across, so we should be picking that up later on. For the time being though, we're obviously just going to continue the climb here up to flight level 290. And we'll make our way up the northeastern coastline of the United States. Should be about an hour in the air. As usual, we'll head outside the aircraft, enjoy some of the views en route. And I'll come back to you again as we're ready to make our descent and approach in towards Martha's Vineyard. Approach, Delta 409, cross 
aircraft path from 12-3 to cross camera at 11,000 at 250 knots of golf. Got a 409 near to approach the park, camera heading 040, the vector also makes 22 left approach, information the hotel is now current. Okay, hey, we'll get hotel, we'll expect to two left and depart camera at 040, Delta 409. The 409, the RVR for runway 22 left, touchdown 1,600, midpoint 1,400, roll out 1,000. Delta 409, you copy the RVR? Yeah, say it again, please, Delta 409. Sure, the RVR for runway 22 left, the touchdown 1,600, midpoint 1,400, roll out 1,000. Okay, copy Delta 409. Delta 409, the Kennedy altimeter 29903, descend and maintain 4,000. All right, descent maintain 4,000, 2993, Delta 409. Delta 1340, contact final 125.7, but before you go, you'll see my seat traffic at your 1 o'clock and uh, 1 zero miles southbound, challenge trip coming out of uh, 3,000 for 1, 2,000. Okay, search for traffic, switch now 257, Delta 1340. Delta 1340, that traffic will stay off your right side. Very good, thanks. Mega 2338, near approach, support camera heading 040, vector, ILS runway 22 left approach, the RBR for runway 22 left, 1,600, the uh, midpoint, 1,200, the rollout, 700. Copy that, support uh, 040 uh, at camera at American 2338. Delta 409, contact final 125.7. 25.7, Delta 409. So welcome back to the cockpit. As you can see, we're just turning overhead the Charlie, Charlie, Charlie VOR at the moment, now in FMS navigation. And again, the automatic's doing a very nice job so far of getting us over towards Martha's Vineyard. Just coming up on about 100 miles to run towards destination, so that's a pretty good time to start our descent. In terms of terrain, there's not really much to speak of overhead Martha's Vineyard itself, so we're going to descend straight down towards 3,000 feet for the ILS. We'll set that now on the MCP. Obviously just going to take us a little while here to dial our way down towards 3,000 feet. The MSA safety the arrival is actually 2,100, so again, plenty of uh, margin in hand there. And speed over the ground, just under 400 knots. Not a particularly quick aircraft by jet standards, the Honda Jet. So it's 3,000 feet, we'll go for a vertical speed of 2,000 feet per minute. Now we'll just come back off the thrust there as well. Make sure we keep ourselves below VMO. So we'll come back into Mac on the speed bug. We'll go for two five zero knots here in the descent. And again, just adjusting the thrust to maintain the speed. Just wait until we've got ourselves nicely established here in the descent. And then we'll start briefing up for the approach. So it looks like we're pretty good now there on the speed. Just recenter our heading bug. And coming back down to the checklist page. We'll go for the descent checks. Can be a little bit fiddly sometimes trying to work your way through scrolling down through the checklist items. So for the descent checks, landing field elevation, set and anti-ice. Not required for the time being, but we are coming down through a cloud layer, so it may well be that we need the engine anti-ice on later on during the descent. Outside air temperature currently minus 2 degrees. Again, we'll just tick off the items as we go. Altimeters, we'll set those later on again in the descent as we come through flight level 180. So descent checklist is complete, we'll leave the approach checklist up for the time being. As I said, we can start briefing the approach, getting the aircraft set up for the arrival. Just coming down through uh, flight level 260, speed's still looking good. So we'll come down to the left hand MFD, we'll go to charts once again. And Martha's Vineyard for the arrival, looking for the correction for the approach, looking for the ILS 24. We can brief that up ahead of time, so for the ILS frequency it's 108.7. We'll tune that up on nav 1. 
And we can transfer that straight across. So we've got 108 decimal 7 on nav 1. And for the VOR itself, 114 decimal 5, we'll tune that up on nav 2. And again, we'll just transfer that straight across. So we've got Mike 50 Yankee already identifying that. That'll give us a DME inbound towards the field should we need it. But of course, we've got the FMS, so pretty easy to navigate in the aircraft. Find approach course 236. So we'll just briefly come back into uh, heading, which we now have on the autopilot. And we'll set up a uh, BR1 on 236 for the course. Again, just going to take us a little bit of time here to slew that around. Just come slightly further back off that thrust. American 2338, increase rate of descent, traffic uh, about 10 o'clock and uh, 2 zero miles currently. Uh, south eastbound, Airbus A320 climbing at a 2000. Increase the rate, American 2338. So that's 236 on uh, NAV1 for later on. Now back into uh, FMS, which we'll is just the heading slightly out to the right, get ourselves back on the CDI bar. Speed is coming back. And in terms of our ground speed, slowly falling there, 377 now, so we'll just reduce that vertical speed. And we'll go back into nav. So we have FMS navigation, minus 1800 feet per minute, setting down to 3000. So frequency set, course 236 is set, aerodrome elevation is 67 feet. Looking to intercept the RLS at 1700 feet but we're actually going to intercept at 3000. And for the RLS, probably category C aircraft with the Honda jet, we're looking at a minimum there of 263 feet. In terms of the terrain as we discussed, not much around there, we've got the MSA of 2100 feet out towards the northwest. Otherwise, not a bad afternoon there, a little bit of weather around, it's uh, basically plus 10k's visibility, but light rain, broken at 4,000 feet, overcast at uh, 1,000, so probably not going to be visual to uh, below 4,000 feet on the RLS. Plan to land on 2-4, and then we'll be vacating off on the left, probably coming off at uh, Charlie, otherwise Delta, straight onto the commercial ramp. As usual, we'll find our own bay and make our way on towards the apron. In terms of our fuel state, we've got uh, John F. Kennedy as our alternate. We've still got plenty of fuel on board the aircraft, around 1,400 pounds, so we've only burned our way through around 800 pounds so far of our total fuel that we loaded up for the flight. Anyway, just coming down through uh, flight level 200, we'll wait until we're down through flight level 180 and then we can reset the altimeters. We've briefed out the approach, we'll come back onto the uh, map page for the time being, we'll take the chart again later on. And showing now a distance to run of 63 nautical miles through flight level 200, so we want about uh, 80 nautical miles conservatively, but we're going to have a little bit of downwind here to put ourselves onto runway 24, so plenty of uh, room to manoeuvre still here at the moment. And we do have a few extra track miles in hand versus what we're seeing there on the nav display. American 2338, contact final 125.7. 125.7, American 2338. Hello, New York, procure 5812's back with you, heading 180200. Procure 5812, near departure, radar contact, maintain 2000. Uh, Kennedy, I'll submit 293, say intention. Stand by, procured uh, 5812, 2000. Okay. Can you get the, say the RVR, Recare 5812? Recare 5812, the touchdown RVR for runway 22 left is 1,200, the midpoint is 800, rollout 600. Copy, thank you. Okay, so we just come overhead the Mike Victor Yankee VOR. You can see that we're now picking up the RLS there. We've got Loke 1 and India Mike Victor Yankee identified. Still maintaining 250 knots for the time being, descending down to our altitude of 3,000 feet. We're still above the uh, glide slope here at the moment. And you can see there, looking at the chart, we're tracking outbound from the field, and as I said, we're going to make a left-hand turn back on towards the ILS. Temperature outside is good now, so we've got the engine anti-ice off, but we're still in the cloud currently. 
And we'll just keep the speed up as we track outbound. We'll come back towards 200 knots just before we make the turn. As I mentioned during the approach, the aircraft doesn't, I have to say, hand fly particularly nicely, but other than that, it's really good fun to operate. The automation seems to work pretty well. So far, I've had no surprises on that front. It's a pretty capable aircraft. Certainly been enjoying the flight thus far. So it's 4,500. We've got another 1,500 feet to lose. And yeah, we're showing now... Doesn't look like we're getting a DME there off the ILS, which is a little bit inconvenient. I'm sure we probably can bring that up via the various options here on the PFD, but we're not going to fiddle around with that just now. I would have expected to see that down there on the uh, Nav 1 bar. Anyway, coming from 4,000, so nearly one to go. And for our sector MSA here, we can actually descend down to 1,600 feet. So we'll just reset our altitude down to 2,000 feet, which we now have set. You can see there as well the glide slope coming in. We'll bring the speed back to 200 knots. So coming off the throttles. There's 4,000 feet. We're just going to track outbound a little bit further here before we make the turn. Anyway, everything looking good at the moment in terms of our fuel state. 1,250 pounds of fuel on board. We can start extending the uh, gear and the flaps once we're below 200 knots, hence our speed reduction down to 200 knots. So there's 200 selected, speed rolling off nice and slowly here. And it looks like we've actually lost the glide slope there at the moment, but I'm happy now that we can start our turn inbound. As with most Microsoft Flight Simulator aircraft, it does take a little while to slew around the selector there. I know you can hold down shift to speed things up, but it's a little bit inconvenient. I don't tend to use my keyboard as I'm flying. We'll get our speed back to 190 knots now, just to give us a little bit of margin before we take the gear and the flaps. And again, really nice display here, obviously pretty configurable, and with Navigraph, which of course you will need a subscription for, but Having the chart and the display there with the aircraft, it's really good for situational awareness. It makes flying the aircraft pretty easy. So 90 degrees inbound towards the lope currently. We'll make a intercept turn in just a moment's time. And we're we'll already below the cloud layer here at 3,300 feet. And looking at the chart there, Martha's Vineyard just off on our left. Can't make out the field just yet. So, speed's still rolling off. We'll come on to our intercept heading. Brickyard 58, 12, turn right heading 220. Right turn 220, Brickyard 58, 12. We're working on plan. Brickyard 58, 12, thank you. And there's 3,000 feet, so one to go. We'll come into nav once again. Just wait until we get that glide slope again before we come into approach. Okay, so coming on to the localizer now by the looks of things. Looks like the aircraft's turned us a little bit early there. We'll see how we go. We might come back into uh, heading, although. Looking at our intercept there on the chart, it should do the trick, but I would have expected the turn there to have been a little bit later. That's probably the typical uh, Sobo avionics there playing their usual games. Anyway, we're below 200 knots quite comfortably now, so we'll take the flaps to approach. Only really big change there in pitch. Coming from the throttles to maintain 190 knots, we'll tick off our last item there on the checklist. And we'll move through to the before landing checks. There's a glide, so we'll come into approach. And again, the aircraft definitely a little bit early there in terms of glide slope intercept, although it does seem to be coming back. So a little bit iffy there in terms of actually tracking the ILS. That does tend to be fairly typical in the sim. Already visual with the runway though, so we can always go for a visual approach if we need to. We'll centre up the heading bug. We'll maintain uh, 180 knots now, so we'll just come back on the speed bug. 
we'll just wait until we've got uh, glide slope capture there. Mr. Approach altitude is 2,500 feet, just levelling off at 2,000. Landing gear can come down. The approach to JetBlue 838 information uh, India, levelling off at 9. And again, just coming up on the throttles to maintain 180 knots. There's three greens. Quite a bit of drag there with the gear, so needing quite a bit of extra thrust there to maintain the speed. Speed brake is retracted. Flaps. Just wait until we come onto the uh, glide there before we take them to landing. So we'll hold the checklist for now. And showing nine miles now to run towards destination. Now that we can see the runway visually there, you can see again the aircraft turned us in a little bit early to bring us onto the localizer. We're on a bit of a dog leg here to intercept. Nonetheless, we are about to uh, intercept the loc. And we should be intercepting the glide there in about uh, two miles time. So really it's just been the ILS there where the aircraft's been a little bit less than stellar in terms of its performance. Nonetheless, I mean it has captured there. We have actually come onto the localizer, but it just didn't fly it particularly well. Be interesting to see how well it tracks the glide as well. So we do have glide slope there on the FMA. We'll set uh, 2,500 feet for the missed approach. Looks like we are tracking the glide. So again, coming off the thrust, go to landing there on the flaps. Uh, just coming up through 60 meters, so we'll bring the speed back now to uh, 160 knots. And again, working our way through the checklist, so the flaps are set. We'll come back to VREF momentarily, and autopilot and your damper will kill once we're nicely established on final. So bring the speed bug there all the way back to VREF now, coming off the thrust. 120 knots for the VREF. We'll just wait until we're back on speed. We'll centre up that heading bug and then we'll take out the autopilot. Sims looking pretty great today and the conditions weren't too far off the real world, which is great to see. We're two reds, two whites on the Pappy. Just coming through a thousand feet, so we'll disconnect the autopilot. We'll take out the yaw damper. And just coming up on the thrust levers again to maintain VREF. Again, the aircraft very sensitive on the controls. And feels fairly default to fly, I have to say. doesn't tend to uh, sit where you put it, it tends to oscillate around a little bit as you can see. The flight director is telling us to fly up there, we're going to disregard that. It's putting us a bit high on the glide slope and the pappy. Yeah, so as usual, flying the ILS, not exactly uh, bulletproof here in the Honda jet. So we'll touch down here on runway uh, 24, it's manual spoilers, manual braking. Looking good on the Pappy still, we've got our two reds, two whites. And just drifting a touch low, correcting for that. Looking good on the speed. A couple of birds there overhead. A little bit of a float. So let's touch down. Onto the brakes. We'll come fairly firmly onto the brakes here. We want to take the uh, next available left. That's onto Delta as we discussed during the briefing.
Okay, so vacating left onto Delta. We'll get rid of the speed brakes. Again, lights are all automatic, so nothing for us to worry about there. We'll just make sure we're all clear on the right. And joining left onto the main taxiway. So we've got the uh, GA parking down at the south end of the field. We're going to head north. We'll go and park up towards the main terminal. So landing checks are complete. And again working our way onto the next checks. Cabin signs will leave as is. Engine anti-ice is off. Speed brake has been retracted. So we'll just find a spot available here on the right. Flaps can come up. Looks like there's a spot just out to the uh, right here of the other business jet. We'll just make our way around the dash eight. Jet blue, 1518, turn left heading 140. Uh, left 140, JetBlue, 1580. It's actually not a uh, taxi line in, but we'll take it for today. JetBlue, 838, descend and maintain 4000, altimeter 290, 903. 4000, JetBlue, 838. Okay, so onto the brakes. Heart brake can go on. Just working our way through the last of the off landing checks, so flaps are retracted. And the trims. So aileron and rudder are both neutral, and the pitch trim there is set in the green band. The shutdown checks, the parking brake is set. Wheel chocks, the ground crew should install shortly. Engine anti ice is off. And again, they're a little bit fiddly on the click spot, I have to say. It's easy to hit the parking brake. External power again should be connected up in just a moment's time. Thrust levers will bring to the cutoff position. So good shut down there on the left. And same there on the right. Cancel the master warning, that's the oil pressure on the engines. Cabin signs can go off. Oxygen supply is off. Parking brake will leave on. And the battery master can go off. So there you go guys, I hope you enjoyed our outing in the Flight FlightFX Honda Jet. A really nice little aircraft from them overall, very well detailed, certainly in terms of the systems and the modelling. As always, I'll try and briefly break the product down into some positives and negatives. Quite a lot of good things to say about the aircraft here with a couple of caveats. We'll start with the negatives, work our way through to the positives. My first and really only major negative with the add-on would be the flight model. As I mentioned during the review, it's very light on the controls. It really feels like flying a default aircraft for the most part. Really rather twitchy in pitch. As I said, it actually made for quite a high workload trying to both fly the aircraft and operate the aircraft at the same time. The Honda Jet is obviously quite small. I suspect it probably is quite nimble, but again, I think the control sensitivities are a little bit over the top. The aircraft also didn't feel like it had all that much weight or inertia to it. So again, really for me, the only major negative at the moment, I do think that the flight model needs some work. If though you're happy to fly the aircraft mostly on automation, it flies very nicely. Again, the automation seemed to be pretty capable. And really the only area we saw it put a foot wrong there was during the ILS approach. And that does tend to be fairly typical when using essentially the Asobo avionics. That would be my only other significant negative. Again, we saw that the ILS capture behavior, very typical of a default aircraft, a little bit subpar. Of course, as always, making assertions about the flight model without actually having flown the jet, I am just making an educated guess, but I certainly hope that flight effects do take another look at the flight model. To me, currently, it doesn't feel up to the same standards as the rest of the product. Otherwise, though, I have to say I was really rather impressed with the Honda jet. Texturing and modelling, obviously excellent, really nice level of attention to detail. Both internally and externally, the aircraft looks really nice. The same is true of the sounds, the engine sounds were excellent, as were all of the cockpit control and switch sounds. The change in engine note was perhaps a little bit abrupt when coming up and down on the thrust, but otherwise again, a really nice ambience in the cockpit and a very nice sounding jet overall. I was very pleasantly surprised as well with the systems modelling, it seemed to be rather comprehensive. 
and even more so with the avionics modelling. Overall there seems to have been a lot of work done there to customise the avionics and again I thought they were very capable, very well laid out and really nicely done. As you will have seen for yourselves, particularly during the startup, lots of nice little features on the aircraft. We saw the initialisation, the pre-flight test, the various pieces of ground equipment as well during the external shots. With the Honda Jet, I feel like you do get a real bang for your buck, generally speaking. There's a lot of quality there for not very much in terms of price. I'm not someone that typically flies business jets in the sim, but I have to say I really enjoyed the outing in the aircraft. As it stands, I would still say that the product is worth the money. Again, there is a lot of quality there for the price. And as I mentioned in a couple of other videos now, it's really great to see these smaller developers putting out some really nice products and also at some very reasonable prices. Obviously it's a trend we want to continue to see. So again, overall I think the Flight FX Honda Jet is a very nice aircraft in many respects, very well modelled in a lot of different areas. For me, just a bit of further refinement in the flight model would certainly go a long way. I'll keep it fairly brief today, I think that pretty much covers what I have to say about the product. Lastly, just touching on the FPS, I was getting about 64 FPS in the Honda Jet versus about 75 in the default Cessna 152. So only dropping 11 frames, that's pretty impressive really with the 4 or 5 screens that we have on the flight deck. Anyway ladies and gents, if you are looking for a business jet within Microsoft Flight Simulator then I would say that this is certainly right up there in terms of options. The only other aircraft that really comes close for me is the working title CJ4. Once again, I do hope you enjoyed the video and found it to be of use. If you did, please consider giving it a like and subscribing to the channel. As always, a very big thank you to my channel members and patrons for all of your support. It's hugely appreciated. I hope that all of you are having a great day wherever you are. Take really good care and I will see you all again soon.